Bonjour, everyone. Hi, this is Neshi Lokatz on Star Nations Radio Network on Facebook live stream. Um, welcome to Star Nations Communications from Home. And um, it's Tuesday night, April 10th, and it has been a whirlwind of a day here. And uh, so I'm, I'm glad to be here with you this evening and uh, talking about something that is um, very important, very important um, across the entire world. And so we're going to get into that in just a second as people start coming into the chat room. And Jocelyn's the first in. Hey, Jocelyn, thank you for being here tonight. We appreciate that. We appreciate that quite a bit. Um, and I, I want to say from the get-go... Um, <laughs> A few people know about this already. Um, I've been ill. Um, I had that respiratory flu. I know I hardly ever get sick. The last time I I was sick, I think it was like at the end of 2015. I hardly ever get sick. And um, so here I am, <laughs> literally in bed, and um, I've got a magazine to to publish and shows to promote. And but we got it done. We really did. And today was um, an amazing day. Amazing. And I'll tell you why. Because we have three shows on, on Star Nations Radio Network today. Tuesday's always a busy day. And um, and so helping Mervin with his show from Star to Stone this morning. Um, if you caught that show, you caught me on uh, Tuesday morning with hair not done and makeup not on. <laughs> And it was good, though. It was good because I was able to help Mervyn. We had, uh, it's Mercury retrograde, okay? And um, he had a problem per, um, broadcasting from his fan page. So we knew what to do, knew what to do, and so we got it done for Mervyn so he could have his first solo show. Um, and then Polly Joe Chakra Sessions came up at uh, noon Eastern time, and her show went off without a hitch and had a really great healing meditation that let me tell you I needed <laughs> and I'm glad I was stuck around and was able to do that healing meditation with her um, and then after that we got to publish the magazine the April 2018 issue 59 magazine for Star Nation Star Nation's magazine was published this afternoon and um, I have to say, you know, I, I'm partial. I really am. I mean, I'm not going to hide that because the the magazine has, uh, I've been working at it now for five years. And um, from the very, very first issue all the way to this one, um, it, it's always fun for me. It really is. And this particular issue, I I am really proud of because the contributing writers have shared so much of themselves in this particular issue um, for a lot of different topics. And one of them we're gonna be talking about tonight, which is the elephants. Um, but we also had topics about listening and mother earth. And um, so we had a lot of, of ranging topics that were really, really good. I'm gonna share those a little bit later with you in the show. But right now, what I'd like you to do, if you could for me, please, is to like and to share the show. And um, I don't know if you if you guys keep track of uh, Facebook and what's going on with Facebook. Um, we've <clears throat> there's some changes um, going on because of the um, data mining, and um, and so. It, it is even more important for us to share what we like and to, to, to actually like or love whatever we're seeing because that's the only way that it's actually going to reach a lot of people. Um, the logarithms are still important. They're still going, but there's so many changes going on right now that um, it, it's hard. It really is hard to keep up to try to figure out um, what is what is Facebook looking for now. And so if you wouldn't mind, whoops. If you wouldn't mind liking and sharing, that's what I'm doing right now. And I'm going to share it over to um, our group at um, the Star Nations Radio Network. It's a closed group. That's where most of the the community hangs out. And I'm just going to say we're live stream streaming. And to join us. And I always have to... 
I wish I was a better speller when I'm typing. Because <laughs> I always have to go back and correct it. <laughs> there. Now. There we go. I hope it went. There we go. And I'd appreciate if you guys do that. Um, uh, we found out um, not too long ago, uh, because of all the changes that's happening with, with Facebook, that when you're using a third-party app like we do, BeLive, our partners at BeLive, which help us to do these really cool kind of interviews, um, we're having issues with um, broadcasting from groups. And so um, we're putting together a fix for that. And uh, and hopefully that will be ready for you guys next week, or at least I'm hoping cross my fingers by Wednesday. Um, and so, hey, Anne, Anne, Annie, hi. One of my friends, good to see you in the house. I appreciate you being here. Um, <clears throat> and so um, that's a little bit about what's been going on with Star Nations. Now, what I want to do is get to the interview because it's really, really important. And why is it important? It's important because it affects one of our um, one of our relatives, the elephants out of Africa. And um, contributing writer Leslie Serenessi, she writes for us under the Communicating with Sacred Animals section in the magazine. And her April uh, issue article is about the 96 elephants, and that's the title of her article. Um, Leslie is an animal communicator, and she lives in Michigan. And she, her clients are from all over the United States. She flies to Montana <laughs> to go to go visit with the grizzlies, and that's kind of where she kind of started with uh, with the animal communications with the bears and. Um, Leslie has her practice, of course, in Michigan, but she also works with the Detroit Zoo. And uh, and so she is um, in service to the four-legged and those who uh, uh, fly and those who crawl, the animal kingdom. And I'm going to bring Leslie on, okay? And uh, we're going to we're going to we're going to chat a little bit here. Hi, Leslie. Hi. Welcome thank you for having me on. Yeah, oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. You know, we've been on together before. This is, I don't know, like our third, maybe or fourth show together, something mm -hmm. like that. And so I appreciate you taking the time on a Tuesday night to be with oh. us. Yeah. Thank, thank yeah. you. It's an important topic. I, I really appreciate the, the um, ability to be able to talk about it. Yeah. And you know what? I think what I'm going to do, Leslie, is I'm going to show everybody the cover and so that they kind of know what we're talking about here. This is the um, April issue cover of Star Nations magazine. And um, April is has Earth Day in it. That's why a lot of stuff about um, Mother Earth and, and, um, and that sort of thing. But you also see 96 elephants right there on the cover. And the reason why we put it on the cover is because we needed to, to be able to talk about um, something that's really important. Um, and Leslie, thank you so much for writing this article entitled 96 Elephants. Um, and it is, I'm going to try to see if we can do this like that. There we go. I think that'll work. Um, thank you for writing this article. I know that it wasn't exactly emotionally an easy article to write. Is that right? Yeah, that's very true. true. It was very heart-wrenching. So could you, could you fill us in a little bit about what, what is the 96? What is with it that number? Yes. Yeah, so I didn't know this, but um, I, I was at the Detroit Zoo and uh, I'm a docent there. So I go and I, I educate people about the animals and um I found this little pin in a, in a bowl and there were a whole bunch of them. And I, I grabbed one and I put it on my Detroit lanyard, my Detroit zoo lanyard and uh, kind of went on my merry way, but I, it said 96 elephants. And so I thought, Oh, we must be trying to help 96 elephants find a home or something like that. And um, 
So as I was looking at it and um, kind of concentrating on it, and I saw it more when I got outside and I was in the light, I I started to feel like there was something more behind it. And I knew that the Detroit Zoo wouldn't be um, rescuing 96 elephants and bringing them here because we had two elephants that we actually moved off to um, California because it just really isn't a good environment for them. So I started to wonder like, well, what is this? And um, so I started to connect with the with the elephants. And what I found out was, and um, after going to the website for the Wildlife Conservation Society, is that 96 elephants are killed every single day in Africa. 96 every day. And I had I had no idea. And it just I just couldn't believe it. And so um, I sat down. Um, I really actually literally started to get wobbly. I started to get very ungrounded. I, I started to get, um, I had to grab a railing because I thought I was going to fall over. And um, I sat down and I um, started to connect with, with the energy of these 96 elephants. And Neshi, it was so odd because I didn't see 96 elephants. I saw hundreds and maybe even thousands. They were just everywhere, just everywhere. And, um, and I thought, geez, that, that looks like more than 96. And then this one elephant came forward and she started to kind of be the spokes elephant. And uh, she she started connecting and talking to me. Um, and it was just the most amazing thing, but it was, I, I was crying. I was sobbing. I, I'm at the, I'm at the zoo. I had to go find like a little um, park bench off on the side so that I was kind of away from people because I couldn't just leave and go out and get to my car. I was just so, so drained. I was just so upset and so flabbergasted. I, I couldn't believe, I mean, why, why? Why would you kill 96 beautiful animals like this every day? It just, I mean, they don't eat them. You know, it just, it, it made what no is, sense. What is the purpose for them to do that? Yeah, they're they're poaching their tusks for the ivory. Yeah, so um, it's, you know, so they're trying to do things to help, like they're cutting the tusks off preemptively. Mm -hmm. um, they're dyeing them pink so that they're kind of ruined. Um, so, so they are trying to, to do some things to keep them from being poached like that. But it's just, I mean, really, why? Well, I, I still can't quite understand it and quite fathom it. But, yeah, 96 every day, just in Africa. I don't even know about yeah. um, anywhere else. Right, right. <clears throat> well, we have Jocelyn. Jocelyn is saying that's awful. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. And Cindy's in the house. Hi, Cindy. I'm so glad you could join us. Um, you know, they're, they're, I'm glad that they're trying to do things that are preemptive. You know, but it, it concerns me about cutting off their tusks. You know, um, mm -hmm. but, you know, if it, it saves their life. There's that thing that, you know, which is better, you know, right. um, you'd think it'd be like an amputation for them. Um, mm -hmm. um, dying it pink, you know, maybe, you know, a, a color that that is not. I, how did they feel? I don't even know if you had a chance to even ask this female elephant about that, um, about how they feel about what we're what some humans are trying to do to help yeah so um when i was talking to her i was so overcome with grief um because i could feel all of their grief um you know one of the benefits of being an empath <laughs> so if you could imagine all these hundreds of elephants that i felt all of their grief at one time and um she specifically she came forward she told me her name was mumari Mm -hmm. Mumari and um, she was very grief stricken because she had left her um, 
her girl, her daughter behind. And um, so when I was talking to her um, and I kept saying, you know, oh my God, this is so awful. This is so awful. And at the end, I, I could barely speak because I was literally sobbing so hard and my throat was just raw. And I, I literally like squeaked out, you know, what can I do to help? Mm -hmm. And she said, um, tell the others. And I, I almost, I almost want to cry because I can hear her yeah. say it. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, the only way I guess to, to stop it is if people are aware of it, you mm -hmm. know, and, and care about it. Right. You know, when I was working with your article, um, the two pieces that, that got to me was that she left her daughter and that last piece is tell the others. And so that's what we're trying to do tonight, audience. Um, if you could do me a favor, those people who are in the chat room, if you haven't shared this broadcast and liked it, please do so. Even if you if you don't want to share it, you know, out out, please share it at least with one other person, and then ask them to share it with at least one other person, because more people need to know about this. You know, we hear about, you know, the hunters and the poachers for the ivory and, but it, it makes it, when we hear it in the news or when we read it in a news article, it puts it over there. It doesn't, we, it doesn't affect us, right? But reading your article, Leslie, it affects us. And especially when we, um, understand our connection to all that is in a different way than a lot of other people might, that our connection to them, what happens to them happens to us, affects mm. us and what we do affect them. And so even if we can share this and get, and, and, and do it as they ask is to tell the others, mm -hmm. tell one other person about it. Um, I think that that would be um, extremely helpful because that's what they asked for. Yes. Right. And, and I, I was afraid that she, they, you know, would hate me because I'm, I'm part of the, you know, I thought they might think I was part of the problem, you know, just another human. Um, but I, I believe that they can tell the difference between those that care and those that don't. Um, because she was very kind. She actually, um, one of the most amazing things is she actually, when I'm sitting there sobbing, she was trying to comfort me. And she actually, I could feel her put her tusk, or I'm sorry, her trunk mm -hmm. on my shoulder. And she was kind of, you know, kind of like, you know, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And that was a, an amazing thing to me that she would have so much compassion and, and understanding and not hold it against me, but I really think that she could feel my love and feel my, my angst over, you know, how could this possibly be? Right. Right. It's, um, as an empath and an animal communicator, and I know you've been through this before with, uh, with other animals that you've communicated with, um, but when I read this and I knew the kind of emotion that was flowing through it, my heart went out to you. What it must have been like sitting at the Detroit Zoo, you're working <laughs> and you're having this conversation and, and the, the immense, the immense um, emotion, the, the raw emotion about it. Um, how, how did you cope with that? as an empath yeah you know i actually uh, i was supposed to be at the bears that day you know educating everybody about the grizzly bears and i never even made it back there i i you know literally as soon as i got outside and started kind of looking at this pin and you know trying to figure out what it meant and um you know connecting with them i i, I 
I just almost got so sick and weak and I had to, you know, go find the spot. And I, I was crying so hard and, and I kept thinking, oh my gosh, people are going to go walk by and just think I'm a complete lunatic or something. Yeah. But um, I thought I was going to, to throw up. I was crying so hard and I don't, I, I don't recall ever crying that hard for so, for so long. You know, um, it was just really amazing. But I, um, after I talked to her and, and she, you know, I concluded the conversation. I think I probably sat there for another hour and a half, not being able to move. Mm. Um, and then that night, uh, I kept waking up about every, I don't know, 45 minutes. And I kept hearing that voice that, you know, tell the others and, um, and the other thing that she said to me is when I first saw all those elephants, thinking I would see maybe one or two and maybe 96, but I mean, there were just so many. And um, the first thing she said is, there's more. You know, there's more of us. And and it was so confusing. I'm thinking, more, more, more what? And then she told me that all of them there that I was seeing had been murdered. And I, I'm still getting goosebumps from it. Um, it was just, I mean, it, it's, it just caught me so off guard because, you know, w whenever I think of elephants, I just think they're so beautiful and why, you know, and they're, they, I feel that they heal the earth when they walk. And I just couldn't understand why anybody would want to hurt them. I mean, I guess, I must be living in denial because, I mean, I sort of knew about the the ivory, but I didn't realize, I guess, that they actually killed them for it. But I, I when you really stop and think about it, I guess, you know, they're such big animals. They're not really going to stand there and, you know, let you take their tusks. So it, um, it was very eye opening to me. I felt very naive um, when I got done with it. Uh, you know, I thought, how could I have not known these things? How could I have not known this? You know, um, it's not like I didn't know about the ivory. Um, I knew about it, but it wasn't until I read your article that I felt that strong connection to it. And that's why I wanted to do the show. I, I, I contacted you immediately. Mm -hmm. you for the show right um and and i was this this is the other thing that went through my mind is that you know elephants you know they say that they have a really really um efficient and long memory they mm -hmm. they hold a lot of memory right and so yeah. th from the way i understand that is that um, they're just like the whales. They're kind of like the history keepers, but they're on land, whereas the whales are in the water, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, and so they're holding all of this this history for for the earth. And so when this happens to the history keepers, you know, and the whales get hunted too for for practically mm -hmm. the same purpose the the whale bones and so. <clears throat> And as as the the two leggeds, you know, um, if we if we don't at least talk about it and have the conversation about it, and here sits two empaths trying trying to hold it together as we're talking about <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was um, it's interesting because when I I wrote it, I really struggled with whether I should submit it mm -hmm. because it's not. A happy story you know I some of my stories I, I try to be you know anecdotal or you know humorous or um, but still get a point across and this one really had no humor at all and um, and I sent it off and I thought uh oh I, I don't you know I don't know um, but mm -hmm. as soon as I got your you know I got an email and I thought uh oh a, a rewrite's coming and um, <laughs> You know, you were so supportive and you said, we have to talk about this. This is like, this is beautiful. This is exactly what I, what I want. Yeah. 
And yeah. yeah, I'm trying to find, I thought I had the picture of the African elephant here. Um, I guess I don't. Here, here's one um, that I changed my um, my personal cover to, and and these are African elephants. Um, it's Mount Kilimanjaro in the background. I think so. In the background, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? There, there's something I also want to share here is because, um, you know, we we have a lot of empaths here. At Star Nations. We just do in our community. It's just. Mm -hmm. That's who we are. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, and I know that um, people who read the article, people who, who watch this um, in the audience and and watch the recorded show um, for those impasse. I want to suggest this. Is that. Um, is before you read it is to get grounded and centered. You know, it's going to be helpful for you to do that. Um, after you read it, and even after you watch this video, is to do that again. Get grounded, get, get connected to grandmother, get grounded, get centered. Um, it's going to help. It's going to help. And um, if you're into stones or crystals, you know, use your tools to be able to... Um, to take in the information. Don't let the emotions take up residence. <laughs> let it pass through you because as empaths, that's one of the things that we do. And, and it's part of the helping, helping the healing of it now, but don't stop there. I'm serious. Please share it with at least one other person um, and ask that person to share it with at least one other Um because that way we at least were doing what we were asked to do. And that was to share it with the others. We're the others. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Leslie, is there anything else that you'd like to share about that experience with us before we move on to the next subject? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm truly humbled by it. Um, I'm truly grateful for it. It, it was extremely difficult, but um, I, I feel so blessed that they were able to trust me to give me this message. And I, I feel like it's changed my life. Um, I feel like I have a, a different, you know, viewpoint. And, you know, now I can, like you said, we could do something about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, I still have my, my little pin, but also, um, um, I've been going and checking on the wildlife conservation society, um, website and, um, you know, you can of course donate there and, um, and, you know, the interesting thing is, is that I, I work with the wildlife SOS, which is, uh, they rescue Asian bears and elephants in India. Oh. And so I've talked to um, elephants since then, but um, but it's more um, it's more about you know how are they feeling, how are things going? Because these are animals; these are ones that have been rescued. Okay. And and the other um, conversation was on those that that didn't get rescued, and and so um, I just. Feel like uh, I can help now both sides. I can help those that you know didn't get rescued, and I'm helping those that actually did get rescued. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Jocelyn. Jocelyn said she shared. We appreciate. Thank you. Thank you very much. I could, if, if I could put a heart on there, I would. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Jocelyn. We appreciate that, and I'm sure the elephants appreciate that too. Um, yeah. It, well, but that's a good thing, you know, to, to, to have to, to be in the position of working with both groups, the, the group that, that um, ha had to transition and cross over died, was murdered. Um, and that's a whole different of um, work with them than it is with uh, those that were 
um, relocated and saved, mm -hmm. you know, um, but thank you for doing all of that. Really. You know, I think that, um, animal communication, especially these days, because, um, it's much more accepted, much more talked about. Um, there's a lot more people, um, tapping into that to get help, um, for all different kinds of reasons, right? That, mm -hmm. um, but this is the piece of animal communication that many may not even be aware of is that it, it's just, we appreciate you talking to our dogs and our cats and our birds mm -hmm. and our horses. We appreciate that because a lot of times it's, it's trying to help solve a problem, right? Right. But this kind of communication that you do, um, it, it really is embracing and using your gift to affect so much more. And so I appreciate that. And if I could, I'd hug you right now. <laughs> Aw, virtual hug. <laughs> really, really. <laughs> Oh my gosh, well, jo Jocelyn has something here for you. She says, your passion with elephants is like mine with wolves. Yes, yes it is. Yes, yes it is. And so, you know, um, I'm, I'm so glad you said that, Jocelyn, because we can, we have the, we, we have the ability to, um, to get the word out in a much faster way, in a more comprehensive way than, than we've ever had before. And if we can help each other to do that, um, you know, that's teamwork. It's mm -hmm. working together, right? Yeah. Jocelyn, you should you should write an article for Star Nations magazine about the wolves. Leslie has done one before, um, mm -hmm. but you know, from Jocelyn, if you do it from your your perspective, your point of view of um, the protection of them, that. That'd be great. So we'll talk about that. I'll talk to you about that, Jocelyn. I'll PM you. Isn't that what they say? Yeah. You know, isn't that, whenever I going to talk to your people and your people will talk to my <laughs> people. <laughs> yeah, it's, right. You know, it's, it's important because um, one of the things that I like to, to think about myself is that I'm the voice for the voiceless. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm the voice for them. And and uh, and sometimes it is just, you know, talking about behavioral issues. And are you happy? And does your new food make you itch? And, you know, those kind of things. But um, also, as you know, I work with the Grizzly Bear Rescue Sanctuary, and they were all rescued from, you know, bad situations. And the Wildlife SOS, you know, have rescued um, elephants. And, um, you know, I have all kinds of other uh, clients. But... Um, you know, it's, it's like you said, you know, this is, is really important. You know, this is saving lives. And if, if you can, you know, do that and make a difference. Mm -hmm. And if it, even if it's, you know, 95 elephants, which, you know, that's 365 in a year, because it's, mm -hmm. it's 90, 96 every day. It's still, every time I say that, I still am baffled by that a day. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask you for that um, website address again. Yeah, it is WCS.org. It stands for Wildlife Conservation Society. Okay. And uh, they're the ones that um, created the, the, I guess, the the movement or the campaign of the 96 elephants. And they're the one that, you know, made these little pins and they must have, the zoo must have got it from from them, and like I said, they had this little bowl of them. And um, I don't, I just was walking by and thought, oh, I need one of these, and I picked it up. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. Yeah, kinds of creatures. Thank you. Yeah. And I Thanks, just Justin. I just put the, the that website into the um, comments so that it'll it'll travel with with the video now. Good. Great. Thank you so much, Leslie, for joining us. Now, the thing is, before I let you go, I want people to know how they can get a hold of you if they would like to um, uh, call you uh, to get your services. 
or to take your classes and what's coming up? I know that you're teaching all the time too. So tell us a little bit about yeah. that. So I am, I am, I'm actually teaching a um, level one animal communication class here in Michigan. It's an actual in-person one. It's at the end of the month. Um, it, I'm very excited because it, it sold out like right away. So um, people are, are excited about it. So I'll be having another one soon that will be um, distance. We'll do it over the phone. Um, we'll do like a tele webinar. And um, so that's coming up. And then I'm presenting at some libraries and I, I will mention the 96 elephants as well. Um, it's different presentations and, um, and I'm um, have a lot of uh, shows coming up where I'm appearing in person, but my, I'm really excited that um, there's a resort in Utah called Red Mountain Resort, and they have asked me to come out uh, for a week and to wow. give different presentations and do readings and to uh, um, work with people and um, tell them what I do. And so I'm really, really excited about that because I'll be doing several presentations. And um, I know one of them, of course, will focus on 96 elephants. So mm -hmm. It's uh, so I'm really excited. There's a lot going on. I'll be doing that in October. And uh -huh. uh, so, yeah, I just got back from Montana. I was out visiting the grizzly bears. <laughs> I know. I know. I see it on Facebook, you know, and, and whenever I see one of those, I share it to the, the publishing page or to um, the main fan page so that people um, here in Star Nations know where you're at in the United States. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, so if people um, want to make an appointment um, or call me, they can go to my website, which is really easy to remember. It's ispeaktoanimals.com. And so they can find my phone number and my uh, email address and, uh, you know, everything there. They can actually um, look at my calendar and make an appointment right there if they want to. Bring it into the comments. There we go. Hopefully I spelled everything okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should I up. speak to animals. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, I try to I, I try to type fast and then I miss the keys. Oh, looks good. All right. Well, I am so glad that you that you could fit us in tonight. And what, oh, I, what I'd like to do is have you come over to Wisconsin and teach a class. That would be fun. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, let's That do would that. be great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to match up calendars and see see how, because how, I know you're the one that's flying everywhere, you know, <laughs> and trying to, to fit in as much as you can, right? Yes. Hey, absolutely. we got to share this one. This is a good one. Amy says, Leslie's the best. <laughs> <laughs> she Thank you, Amy. She knows that I think she's the best. too. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again for freeing up some time for us on a Tuesday night and get uh, and give your pups a hug for us. You know, I will. Actually, uh, I had to take one of them to the vet today because she had blood in her urine. So we were a little nervous about that. She didn't. I asked her if she knew what was wrong, but she she didn't. She thought perhaps she had a bladder infection. So uh, we went and got it checked and. So if everyone could um, keep some good thoughts, they did a ultrasound and they did see a little bit of a mass, but but they think that it probably maybe is just a blood clot from from the blood, and so they gave us some antibiotics and some anti-inflammatories, and then she has to go back in a couple of weeks and they'll do another one to make sure that. Okay. So if everyone could keep good thoughts and nice gentle healing, uh, love to her to Luna. Luna. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Luna is kind of famous in herself. So mm -hmm. definitely we'll, <laughs> we'll send some gentle healing to, to Luna. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks. that. Thanks. If you want to hang around in the green room until we're done, um, you can, if you'd like. Um, I just have a couple things I need to share with everybody. Yes, yeah. I'd love to. Okay. Thank right. you. Uh huh. All right. Well, what, that is a really um, important conversation to have and I'm so glad that we did um, <clears throat> I just I, I would not want to talk to you guys a little bit about the new issue um, there are so many good articles in this particular issue um, ranging from the elephants um, to Minnie Kansman's um, article communicating with Gaia and um, 
you know, so let me, let me go through a couple of them with you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if my voice will hold out. <laughs> All right. Here's one. The Earth Acupuncture. It's a featured article and it's written by Karen Haldane. And uh, Karen is, lives in um, Colorado. And um, I know Karen through the early days in, of uh, feng shui and space clearing. And um, when our community asked about basic information about earth acupuncture, she was the first person that came to mind. And, um, and so she has written this really wonderful article about what is earth acupuncture and why should we use it? Um, she also has some classes going on in Colorado. And so if you're interested in earth acupuncture, you're going to like to read this article. It, and uh, maybe even contact Karen. Karen is going to be on with me next week um, here at Star Nations Communications from Home. And so you'll be able to get to meet her. And then we'll talk a little bit more about her article in depth. Yeah. Minnie Kansman, she wrote a featured article for us for Earth Day. <clears throat> And I have to say, this also came out of the community because Star Nation's community wanted to know, what does Grandmother Earth have to say about all of this stuff that we go through and how do we communicate with her? And so, um, Minnie Kansman, don't you just love that picture? That is a picture that Minnie took. And uh, so many uh, communicating with Gaia is an article that um, is really near and dear to Minnie's heart because Minnie is definitely connected to the earth. And those of you who know many know what I'm talking about. And so she took the time to write this article. And if you are looking for what does grandmother have to say and how, how can I connect better with her? It's a good article, good article for you. And yeah, now I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this correctly, so but we'll give it a try, okay? Remembering Yam HaShoah. Now, and that's that's Yiddish, that's uh, Jewish. This is written by Sharon Rosenblum, and Sharon is our contributing writer, monthly contributing writer for Nourishing Body and Soul. And this month, what she wrote about was this particular... Uh, mm, it's not really a celebration as much as it's an acknowledgement and remembrance of um, the Holocaust. And talk about a hard article to write. Um, Sharon did her very, very best as another empath to share um, a, what it's like from her family to um, they have an experience of going through the Holocaust Museum and what was that like for her and for her family. Um, but she also shares a really good uh, recipe for brisket and explains why is brisket, it's kind of like um, comfort food, you know? And so um, if you want to get some background information and understand um, a very little known um, remembrance an annual remembrance. Um, this is a really wonderful article too that you'd like to to read. Now, <clears throat> Paul Krauss writes under the Sacred Masculine section in the magazine. And this month he wrote about meditation skills uh, live in the now. And let me tell you, Paul has written about meditations before in the magazine for us. Um, and he always writes so down to earth and just, you know, really really plain and telling us by fact, why is it important? Why should we do it this way or that way? And really this one is about being in the present moment, being now. And because um, we can waste a lot of time, you know, thinking about the past or projecting to the future. Um, and so, and with meditation, we can actually helps us to stay here in the moment right now. And, uh, and this, he took this picture, he took this picture and I love it. Um, it's a, it's a Zen garden, um, with a rake and I love that picture. So if you are looking at a kind of a Buddhist kind of perspective on meditation, that is a really good article. And, um, I was going to say something else about, 
there was a little background piece to something and it just went right out of my head. Huh. Well, join me next week for the interview with Karen Harlane about earth acupuncture and what that means and um, and how, how can we use it? Why should we use it, right? So with that, I would like to tell you to have a great rest of the Tuesday, Tuesday evening. Um, thank you for making some time to be with us this evening. And um, even if you're watching the uh, recorded show, uh, we appreciate that, number one. But it would really be um, very, not more than, more than nice. And we'd be very uh, grateful if you would like and share the broadcast, especially this one about the 96 elephants. Okay. All right. So I'm going to say in Potawatomi, Baba Mina, which means until we see each other again, and that'll be next week, Tuesday, right here at Star Nation's communications from home and do you want to say good night hang on let me bring it back up there we go <laughs> i didn't know if you wanted to say good night <laughs> i was blowing you a kiss <laughs> okay all right yes good thank night. you everyone thank all you right. very much yeah good night everyone thank you <laughs>